Hi there, me, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke consultant. So we're going to discuss dizziness and stroke. So we're going to look at this in two ways. We're going to look at it. One, uh, is dizziness a common side effect after stroke? Or is dizziness even a side effect after stroke? And then secondly, is dizziness a indicator or one of the signs or symptoms you're going to have a stroke? Uh, like any research video I've done, I've included all the links for the research I've done below. Uh, so the best two documents I found there would be the first one, which is from, again, the Stroke Organization in the UK. It's an eight page PDF. And then the last one, uh, it's from the SABO. They have some exercises that you can do to help increase or improve your balance after stroke. Again, like any of my topics, I'm going to reiterate, I am not a doctor. I've only played one on TV. If anything that I say during this video resonates with you, please approach your neurologist, your occupational therapist, your physiotherapist, and have a discussion with them. And they are the team that'll help you. I'm just gonna help get you there in probably a better fashion, right? So balance involves everything to do in your life. It's coordination. It's coordination about how your body moves through its surroundings. It impacts your day-to-day -day activities. From reaching to an object to bending over, uh, may feel dizzy, may feel unsteady, uh, increases your opportunity to have a fall. Balance problems after a stroke. You, I'll be honest, in my, in my specific uh, situation, I had some significant balance problems for the first maybe six weeks after my stroke. They started to get better on their own and they started to drastically improve once I was in physiotherapy. I still do have balance issues at times when I get overtired, when I get overstimulated, comma, not in a good way, uh, when I become a little bit confused, uh, the balance problems can become a little bit worse. So sometimes if you're struggling to walk or move after a stroke, it could be many things. It could be muscle weakness, it could be impacting your balance. It could be how the stroke has damaged your brain, so it's it's messing with the inner ear. Uh, it could be a various number of reasons, and, and we'll discuss some of that. As the brain begins to repair itself immediately after your stroke, your balance will gradually and organically improve. Right? Uh, however, it'll improve uh, remarkably better with intervention. So, it, like most things after a stroke, some of it isn't really well studied. And this is one of those events, uh, partly because you have the stroke and it might take a week or two for you to get into physiotherapy. So the majority of the balance problems has simply recovered on its own because the brain is doing the healing on its own. So losing your sense of balance, having a sense of dizziness, right, can impact everything from getting out of a chair, can impact everything from like bending over. Uh, it can have a significant impact because behaviors and activities that were just autonomic things you just did getting in and out of a chair getting off a, a sofa or a couch or for those of you that might have one a chesterfield um for getting into bed getting out of bed sitting upright going from a complete supine position to having your upper body 90 degrees elevated right so again these are where your occupational therapist and your physiotherapist can help create structured routines and show you activities to help with that portion of your recovery. Now, the difficulty is this. Dizziness or lack of coordination, lack of balance is one of the symptoms of having a stroke. But what if that's your only symptom? And we're going to discuss that first and then we'll get into how balance and dizziness can be impacting after your stroke. So there was a study between January 1st, 2000 and June 30th, 2003, where they looked at emergency room admittance uh, to the hospital where the only major presenting symptom was dizziness. So you showed up and you had a sense of vertigo. You showed up and you couldn't maintain your balance. You showed up and your walking was all messed up. Your gait was just screwed. So dizziness could be defined as vertigo, imbalance, um, 
some other form of motor sensory deficit, but you didn't have some of the other classic signs like language issues or sensory issues or visual issues, right? So they looked at approximately 1,666 patients that were identified that showed up of dizziness, you know, and 885 had dizziness, 665 had vertigo, 78 had just general imbalance, uh, about 38 of those had at least one or more of those terms. Out of the six, 1,666, only 53 persons were validated to have a stroke. So just having dizziness on its own without any other secondary symptoms doesn't necessarily mean you're having a stroke. However, if you are the small population where dizziness, vertigo, imbalance, unsteadiness is really your only major symptom, they may miss it. Now, I'm not trying to say that to scare anyone. Let's just consider 53 persons out of 666, or sorry, 1,666. It's a relatively small number, right? So, that the dizziness might also be known as acute vesti vesti vestibular syndrome. It's a well-defined clinical syndrome of continuous vertigo or dizziness with nausea and vomiting related to head motion intolerance, gait unsteadiness, right, uh, and nystagmus, don't even know how to pronounce that, lasting days to weeks. So let's break that down. You have continuous, meaning it doesn't stop. You have vertigo and dizziness, meaning you get lightheaded, you feel just generally off balance, right? Uh, head motion intolerance, meaning you don't like it when your head moves. Right? Gait unsteadiness means when you walk, you're not all that graceful, right? So historically, vertigo was not considered a stroke symptom, right? So they didn't design the clinical tools just to look for vertigo or imbalance or dizziness. So out of 190 high-risk uh, AVS, AVS presentations, they determined um, that 105 of them were caused by stroke. This is another study that was done between 1999 and 2001. Right? Patients who had AVS, who had acute, acute vertigo or dizziness, or nausea and vomiting, head motion intolerance, and unsteady gait with one or more, one or more stroke risk factors were enrolled in this study. They determined that the vast majority, a little over 50%, were caused by stroke. So it's completely possible that you've had a stroke and you have some form of unbalance, some form of dizziness, nausea, and it doesn't go away immediately on its own and it's continuous. It just, it starts and it doesn't abate on its own. So let's just look at some of the factors that we know can be caused by dizziness due to the stroke. So first off, let's just talk your medication. Once you've had a stroke, you're on medication. And your dizziness, your unsteadiness, your sense of vertigo, uh, lightheadedness could be caused by some of the medication you're on. Could be done by an anticoagulant, could be done on a blood thinner, could be done on a blood pressure medication. There could be series of medications working in concert to create one large perfect storm of a side effect. Could be withdrawal from some medications. So once you've been diagnosed with a major health issue, such as a stroke, please don't start using Dr. Google to determine what medications you should or should not be on. I'm gonna emphasize this. So for those that in the back that are about to miss what I'm about to say, I will say it again. Your five-minute Google search does not negate, you know, 12 years in medical school and another five or six, seven, 10, 15 years in effective professional medical practice. Your five-minute Google search isn't a fucking medical degree. So don't use Dr. Google, right? I use Dr. Google just to see what I'm experiencing and is it relevant? And then I bring it to my doctor like, hey, I'm experiencing this. Could this be? I don't make my decisions based on Dr. Google. So if you have any concerns in regards to any of your medications, 
Bring your concerns to your general practitioner. Bring your concerns to your psychiatrist if you have one. Bring your concerns to your neurologist if you're still seeing one. Bring your concerns to a cardiologist if they're still involved in your care. Bring those concerns to your medical clinical team. Bring those concerns to your pharmacist. Bring those concerns to your occupational therapist. Bring those concerns to your physiotherapist. Those are the people that are going to help you make informed medical decisions. Because I'm not a doctor. I've only played one on TV. You then have ataxia. Ataxia is the name for clumsy, uncoordinated movements that are associated with strokes that happen in the back of the brain. A cerebellum or posterior circulation. Right? People with ataxia often have difficulty producing movements quickly enough and in the correct order to avoid losing their balance to recover from a slip trip and that, that then turns into a fall. <coughs> so these are the people that you see that have the jerky movements that may need to use a walker. Right? Unfortunately, some of the damage due to their stroke has impacted their ability to be ambulatory and now their neuromuscular disconnection is now causing their imbalance, if, if not possibly their dizziness. Perceptual problems. I do have this occasionally. So sometimes a stroke can present with your ability to interpret your surroundings. Now, I did a video on uh, sensory overload and shopping, right? Here's where you might be a bit overloaded uh, with just the number of people around you, the, night, the, the number of sounds around you. Um, having to move down an, an aisleway, scan, track, and move to grab the right item. So it can be difficult at times to maintain your balance and plan how you're to move in an environment if you're unsure of your own position in relationship to the space around you. So you may have difficulty being able to properly process the sounds, the smells, the, the sights, all of that to get your brain to give you one coordinated picture of where you are in the world so you understand how you need to move through that world. Neglect. This is a difficult one, also known as spatial neglect or also inattention. It means that your brain is not processing sensory inputs and information from one side of your body. So in my case, I had a left brain stroke, which means I could end up neglecting my right side. So my body, I know my right arm is there, I know my right leg is there, but if I was to have neglect, my brain wouldn't compute the fact that I have a right side. So I might start walking into doorways because my brain has shifted where my center line is. I might inadvertently burn myself because I grab things and not realize it. Like there's so many reasons for neglect, right? People with neglect may try to move, but you forget to move your weak leg. You forget to move your weak arm, thus causing a balance issue, right? Um, you may trip over objects you can't perceive, right? So, for example, uh, your physiotherapist might give you an exercise where they put small blocks down on the floor and you have to learn to step over them. Well, they might teach you initially to bring your foot to the object so you can feel the object. What if your body's not processing that the object's there? You're just going to bash into it, or you're going to have difficulty bringing your foot up over top of it, so you're just going to trip over it. Right? So, also, some people experience the sensation that they're upright, even though you might be leaning heavily to their weak side. Now, I'm told I do this. I'm, I'm told that um, there are times when I get overtired that uh, when I start to walk, I lean to my right because my right side is my weak side, right? <clears throat> Sometimes people can't sit up effectively on their own, so they develop what's called pusher syndrome. So instead of pulling yourself up, you use your unaffected side to sort of push yourself up, right? Uh, that happens sometimes in the early days after a stroke. For those of you that are in the hospital, uh, the physiotherapist or the neurologist, they may lie your bed flat and they may ask you to do things like pull yourself up, right? Vertigo. If a stroke happens in your cerebellum or your brainstem, areas that control the balance in the brain, right? Those, those, those actual physical structures in the brain that are specifically designed to control your balance, right? You may end up with vertigo. That means you might feel dizzy. You might feel a bit fuzzy. You might feel like the world is moving or spinning. 
kind of like a 14 year old the first time you break in your parents uh, liquor cabinet and you down some gin right and you had too much you got the bed spins but in this case you got the world spins loss of sensation right second main factor affecting your balance is the loss of sensation on your affected side this isn't so much neglect right because in neglect you can feel things your brain just doesn't process it the right way with loss of sensation you may not understand completely where your foot is where your leg is if your foot's safely on the ground right so you automatically use your vision to compensate for the lack of feeling so you now have to take extra concentration to compensate for the lack of feeling right so you now have to use one sense to make up for another sense however your vision wasn't meant to do the feeling right your vision was meant to develop a map so you can see it so you can move through your environment but now you've got to take extra time and effort that will now become more tiring right so it also means you might start over time as your day progresses become less aware of your surroundings because you have to take more energy to process it this now means you're now at an increased opportunity for slips trips and falls weakness on one body side so again I had a left brain stroke so my right side is now my weak side I'm right-handed so my right side is almost my dominant side so in some cases it's beneficial uh, to have a stroke where your weak side is also your dominant side that forces you to engage that side so I, I use a pen or pencil in my right hand I use most tools in my right hand so just the day and day going through my world sort of was rehab in a way so a stroke can often cause weakness on one side of the body which makes it difficult to maintain your balance right might make it difficult to sit up safely uh, make it difficult to stand you, you find you, you you can't lift your toes quickly enough from catching on the ground when you step so you might drag your full of foot a little bit as you walk right this is known as foot drop foot drop in and of itself can make you more unsteady I've had foot drop I still deal with it occasionally I I've been told and I've noticed again when I get more uh, as I get uh, tired throughout the day if I get really tired or really confused um, I, my foot drop is a bit more pronounced much like I'm having the, the leaning to the right side right and because foot drop means you're not effectively planting your feet to end the step you're on and to begin the next step with that foot it becomes more tiring over time and you again have to compensate because your body and your brain aren't getting along well enough so you eventually become a little bit more unsteady and then there are other reasons why you might have balance problems right so balance problems could be caused by other things such as an inner ear infection balance problems could be caused by a sinus infection balance problems could be caused by um, a migraine you might have other infections like a urinary tract infection you might have other medical conditions which might be causing uh, some condition that's going to make your balance issues worse in addition to the ones you have with a stroke now there is no specific definitive treatment that will end dizziness after a stroke there is no one specific treatment uh, but you can do exercises and again I'm going to implore you to engage the services of your occupational therapist engage the services of your physiotherapist and they can definitely give you exercises that are specific enough to you and then I've included in the links below the Sabo article that shows uh, a series of exercises I've done some of them uh, and then those are, are very effective in improving your balance on that note if you found this video helpful and or if you are stroke folk yourself or brain injured um, and you suffer from some form of vertigo balance or dizziness issue please leave a comment down below on what you've done uh, to help your situation to improve your sense of balance maybe some of us might get some value out of your uh, your experience and your insights if you happen to have been watching the channel you've been enjoying what you've been watching over the last almost well, a little over 11 months please like share subscribe if you know someone going through their post-stroke journey please 
point the channel out to them. Again, if someone's supporting someone going through uh, their own post stroke journey, point the channel out to them. And if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that being someone appears to have, like we talked about, poor balance, they appear to be uh, confused or they appear to be off balance, uh, they don't appear to be aware of their surroundings, someone is having vision problems, they see in grayscale, they can't see out of one eye, they see a little dot in the world, someone who has facial droop, there's a pronounced, visible, noticeable uh, slackening of the facial, facial muscles, someone who can't raise both arms equally effectively or at all, someone who can't smile equally effectively or at all, someone who's slurring, stuttering words, uh, using inappropriate words for situation or context, has general body weakness, weakness on one side, or has an inability to stand unaided, please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.